G'day guys and gal. You know how last video I was saying how I got out to the country for the first time in over 6 months and it was really nice because I was able to get through the police and army checkpoint due to being a YouTuber. Well, it all came crashing down as we were rudely awoken by the police visiting us and then them deciding that YouTube was not a valid job anymore. Hence, we've been banished back to the city and banned from the country until someone jabs us with a vaccine. To help let out some anger, I started visualizing the death of people I don't like. Hence, I was given the inspiration I needed to make this video. It's no secret that I don't like Lucius. He betrayed some of the best space marines during the Istvan atrocity and his Slaneshi regeneration powers are bullshit. He wins through losing and judging by the amount of faces on his armor, he has lost a lot of times. He is unimpressive and requires his god to suck him off 24-7 to keep him in the fight. There's a reason why Texas Speech has given him a high-pitched voice and turned him into a total joke in their series, because that's what he is. For those of you who aren't aware, Lucius is the champion of Slaanesh, and if you kill him and take pride in the action of killing him, then you painfully turn into him and he is reborn through you and your soul is bound to him. This sounds like an awesome concept until you hear about how ridiculous some of the regenerations he's experienced are, on top of the fact that he has been killed by someone before that took no pride in the act, yet he's still kicking. Before we get started, if you're watching me, you probably like video games, and if you're a normal human, aka you're a capitalist, you also like money. Well now you can get video games and keep your money with the help of today's sponsor, Instant Gaming. Instant Gaming is a website that allows you to buy game keys at a discounted rate when compared to straight off Steam. They are hosting a giveaway for the channel, so if you want a chance to get the game of your dreams for free, then click my link below and enter in the game you want. It is that easy. With pretty much 5 stars on Trustpilot, as well as being promoted by other trustworthy YouTubers like Legend of Total War, Instant Gaming is a company that does what they say. Thank you Instant Gaming for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over 10 characters or entities that could permanently kill Lucius, aka they would feel no pride in his death, or they are so powerful that they could overpower his Slaneshi hacks. This is also twofold. As not only do they need to take no pride in killing him slash be too powerful for the curse, but they actually need to be powerful enough to kill him in the first place. Hence, Gary the Prideless Hobo will not be counted here. I'll do this by first describing why that character can perma-kill him, then I'll give a short, immersive, description of what their fight would be. As a treat, I'll then mention some ways Lucius could be perma-killed without the need of a powerful Prideless character. Let's get into it. Starting us off, we have something so simple yet quite effective, a big ass robot. Due to the outlawing of AI, most robots in Warhammer 40k setting are pretty shit and wouldn't match up to Lucius very well in a duel. However, there are a couple exceptions from this rule that are absolute beasts and could squash Lucius like the bug he is. Hence, a powerful combat robot built by a tech priest, tech priests being noted for their extreme lack of emotions, would probably be able to kill Lucius permanently. Now, as the guy who created the landmine that killed Lucius got turned into him, there's every chance that the tech priest could suffer the same fate as Slaanesh doesn't believe in playing fair. Hence, if we really wanted to be pedantic about it, we could make sure that the creator of the death bot 69000 was already dead before the fight started. Hence, Lucius would have nothing to respawn through, even if Slaanesh was willing to cheat the game for him. I'm aware that Lucius was able to respawn through a Necron, aka a robot. Hence, some people think the death bot 69000 would be vulnerable. However, Necrons have consciousnesses, thoughts and emotions. The Necron felt pride. The only thing the Deathbot 69000 feels is the blissful sensation of getting oil rubbed up and down his shiny body. Here's how the fight would go. Lucius would be spearheading an invasion of a forge world that specializes in turbo dildos. As the Empress children under his command engage with the Mechanicus forces, the Deathbot 69000 would be deployed and beeline at Lucius. A terrible duel would take place. Lucius is a great swordsman, but nowhere in the Swordsman Handybook does it describe a technique on how to deflect four mechanical chainsaw arms randomly flailing at you with the force of a pickup truck behind each blow. After getting some good hits in, Lucius would find himself missing an arm, a leg, with multiple cuts all over his body. As the Deathbot lines up a volcanic shot to blow Lucius to smithereens, Lucius says, I can't wait to tear through your master's flesh and be reborn in his horror. To which the Deathbot replies, Magus Bob the Builder has been deceased for 420 years. Lucius would barely have time to process this and say, Oh, fuck! Before the barrel of the Deathbot's gun roars in fire and destroys him. 
Next up we have Dante, Chapter Master of the Blood Angels. I was tempted to just include Chapter Masters as a whole, however while most of them could kill Lucius, pretty much all of them bar Dante are brimming with pride. Dante, for lack of better words, just wants to fucking die, only keeping himself alive due to an important prophecy which might involve him saving the galaxy. At 1,500 years old, he is an empty, depressed man. He also refuses to drink blood, meaning his body is aged and withered. During the Great Crusade, Lucius was considered one of the best swordsmen of all the legions, up there with Raladon and Sigismund. This might make you worried for Dante's survivability of this fight, however since drinking the Chaos Kool-Aid, the only thing Lucius is the best at is being Slaanesh's pocket pussy. Before I get to the fight between the two and show how Dante could easily end Lucius, we need to go deeper into why he would be immune to the curse. Dante's age and experience has melted away most of his humanly emotions. His fear, his anger, his pride, all of those have washed away. He doesn't feel good when he kills something, he kills it because it has to die. The one thing that remains for him is his duty to the blood angels and his duty to the emperor. Without this intense feeling of duty, he would have happily swan dived into an enemy army with a nuke strapped to his back. Actually, he nearly pulled that once on the Silent King. Now Lucius would be faster and stronger than Dante in a duel. However, Dante's emotionless approach to combat, as well as his experience, would make the fight extremely similar to the final Maul vs Kenobi fight from Star Wars Rebels. Maul was technically more powerful, however he was killed in just over a second. Here's how it would play out. On a distant, uncaring battlefield, Dante would come face to face with Lucius. Lucius would have his usual smug, shit-eating grin, whilst Dante would maintain his cold demeanor. His emotions impossible to see past his death mask. Lucius would make the first move, jumping at Dante like a rabid dog, his blade a blur. Just before his strike would find its mark, Dante would step back and twist his body, using the momentum of his turn to swing his axe in an arc. Lucius' strike would cleave the edge of Dante's helmet, only centimeters away from a killing blow. However, Dante's axe would find its mark, slicing through the decrepit fiend's torso. With a deep gash in his chest plate, Lucius would stumble. As he turns back to Dante, he is launched off his feet with an almost point-blank shot from Dante's Petedition pistol. As Lucius lays there, a smoking ruin, he begins to laugh, choking up blood while he does so. Surely this golden warrior, wearing the helmet of his father's death mask, must be a proud man. To fell Lucius so easily, his opponent must be preparing to brag to his brothers. Then Lucius would be reborn and another face would join his armor. Dante removes his helmet, the attack from Lucius had rented it out of shape. As soon as Lucius saw Dante's face, he knew he was doomed. This was a cold man, with the weight of 1,500 years of unending war bearing down on him. Dante stares at the horrific Lucius for a moment with his uncaring eyes, before raising the Perdition pistol and blowing Lucius's head off, killing him permanently. After Dante we have Sharokin, who we know for a fact can kill Lucius without feeling pride as he has done it before. This is where some obnoxious writing comes into play, but basically Sharokin easily killed Lucius while taunting him as a rabid dog that needed to be put down, and that he felt no pride or pleasure in the act. As such, Lucius was not reborn through Sharokin, however his body mysteriously came back to life later on, to even Fabius' surprise. As such, for Sharikin to permakill Lucius, he would basically just need to do the same thing as before, however this time, shove some C4 up Lucius' dead asshole and blow his corpse to smithereens. A pretty obvious one now, we have the Big E. The Big E. The Big E, both in his mortal form and his god tier throne form, did not feel human emotions like we do, especially not pride. All the artwork and golden armor and light show he put on, he put on for the morale of the Imperium. It had a purpose. If the same effect was achieved through the Big E's armies just wearing an uncolored Sermite, then he would have done just that. Even if the Big E took huge pride in one-shotting Lucius without lifting a finger, Slaanesh's curse would be no way near powerful enough to even tickle the Big E. I would go as far as to say that if a Custodes killed Lucius, they would also be immune to the curse due to how dedicated to duty and uncorruptible they are. The Big E might also personally intervene to protect his custodian from the curse. Here's how the fight would go. The Big E would fart and then Lucius would be deleted from existence forever. 
After the Big E, the next characters that could S clap Lucius would be the Primarchs. It's not clear if due to their unique warp spaghetti, they would be immune to the curse or of Lucius or not, but let's assume they are vulnerable to it. Primarchs see space marines like ants, especially enemy ones. They can kill them with a single swat of their hands. Even the most powerful space marines are nothing compared to a Primarch. They might have large egos and enjoy battle, but they will not feel as if they have achieved something if they killed Lucius. To take this further, the traitor Primarchs would be protected from the curse by their respective god. Their god would go to great effort to protect their most powerful champions. Gilliman never took pride in war or anything he did really beyond his counting ability. Even when a crown of pride was put on his head by a Slaneshi slut, he was able to resist the temptation and then remove it, something that had never been done before. Hence, killing Lucian would probably just make him feel disgusted that such a shit character existed in the first place. Here's how the fight would go. Gilliman and his friends would be ambushed by Chaos Undivided. Lucius joins the ambush and hopes that he can face off against the Imperium's finest. He charges at Gilliman and swings wildly, each shot being masterfully parried until the fourth stroke, which would get caught by Gilliman's fist, his other fist uppercutting Lucius so hard that it cracks his breastplate and crushes his lungs and ribcage. Lucius is launched a dozen meters away. A huge spray of black blood tears itself out of his mouth. As he lands, he looks at Gilliman. The blue giant already turning his attention to a new enemy, with his usual frown on his face. Lucius quickly chokes to death on his broken bones and blood, before remarking that maybe he shouldn't have charged a Primarch. Then forevermore, he dies. An interesting one we now have on this list is a Tyranid. Tyranids aren't driven by pride or desire, they consume because it's their primal instinct and will of the hive mind. But let's say Slanesh try to hack it and make the Tyranid transform anyway, he would be stuck with two problems. Firstly, if the hive mind really wasn't keen on that, it would try overpower the Slaneshi curse and would probably win. Secondly, the Tyranid would get killed by its fellow Tyranids as soon as it started showing signs of change, hence creating a cycle of death for Lucius that would never end. A single hive fleet could have billions or more Tyranids in it. If Lucius takes a couple of days to respawn, then it would take him thousands of years or maybe even indefinitely until he was able to work his way through the entire fleet. Either way, Lucius getting eaten by Tyranids is not a good time for Lucius. After the Nids, we have the champions of each Chaos God. Khan is a mindless killer, and whilst he does have a kill counter installed in his helmet, something that screams pride in what he does, he also has Korn standing over him like a proud dad, and Korn is bitch slapped Slanesh on more than one occasion, so I don't think he would let Slanesh infect Khan with the cancer that is Lucius. Ahriman has bigger things to worry about, and if Lucius tried to infect Typhus, he would get infected with way worse shit himself. Basically, the other champions of their gods are too protected by their gods, as well as the fact that they are probably beyond pride, especially when it involves killing Lucius, who is by far the most useless of the champions. Heading back to the loyalist side, we have Saint Celestine, who would kick Lucius' little ass for the similar reasons why the champions of each Chaos God would. A, because her duty overshines her pride, and B, good luck turning the Emperor's favorite waifu into an ugly motherfucker like Lucius. When Saint Celestine was getting killed for like the 20th time, this time by Khan the Betrayer, she wasn't feeling fear or pain as her wings were torn off and her skull was claimed. She was feeling duty to the Emperor and calmness knowing she had saved lives. She looks down on and pities Chaos, and who is more pitiful than Lucius, that ugly fuck? This is how it'd go down. During the Battle of Cadia, Saint Celestine is tearing across the field and massacring demons left, right and center. She sees Lucius, who is carefully treading around to try and avoid dying to a landmine again like a dumbass. She dive bombs at him. He looks up to see a blaze of light streaming towards him and he shits himself. He knows he's no match for her and he knows that he won't be able to respawn through her, so he begins running, and makes all of 20 meters before he finds himself bisected with the ardent blade. A look of horror on his face as he sees Saint Celestine already move on to greater opponents than him, before everything goes black. Next up we have the Catan, star gods of the material universe who are powerful enough to overcome the old ones themselves. They don't feel pride, all they feel is the desire to consume souls. 
Lucius's soul would taste like rotten cock, and they would not take pride in consuming it. Even if they did, good luck turning an all-powerful star god into Lucius. They are just way too powerful to even be considered as a potential candidate for him. Lucius would be killed by a Catan in the same way as the Emperor would kill him. A loud fart. And finally, the last prime candidate who could put Lucius in the ground forever would be the Silent King. Now we know the Necrons aren't immune to Slaanesh's curse, so despite the power of the Silent King, we have to assume that he is vulnerable to it. However, the Silent King is currently the oldest being in the galaxy by far. When all the Necrons were put to sleep, he stayed awake and travelled not just our galaxy, but the universe at large. He has so much experience, knowledge and wisdom that killing Lucius would generate absolutely zero pride within him. It would be like moving a small chair out of the way to the fridge. We don't yet know the in-law fighting capabilities of the Silent King, but if Lucius can die to an unnamed Necron, then the Silent King shouldn't have any trouble with him. The fight would go like this. Lucius would land on a Necron tomb world because he's a retard. Then he would see the Silent King and be like, fuck this shit, before blowing his own brains out. There are others that could go on this list, maybe Eldrad or Yvrain from the Eldar, but amazing warriors with small egos are unsurprisingly rare in 40k. Someone like Sigismund would totally destroy Lucius, but then fall to his curse, so I think the 10 I've picked out are pretty solid. In saying this though, if someone kills Lucius, then kills himself, theoretically Lucius is a goner. If this did happen, it's likely Sinesh would just ruin the fun and bring Lucius back to life, so maybe only the Emperor or Gilliman with the Emperor's sword could truly give Lucius the death that the audience craves for him. Lilith, the Dark Eldar Arena champion, also believes she can kill Lucius if she removes his armor from him, so that could be another option. Out of everyone on this list, I would like to see Dante kill him in the same style as the way Obi-Wan killed Maul. It would be a really impactful way to kill off an impactless character. And that does us for today guys, 10 characters from Warhammer 40k that could permakill Lucius. The major kill minis are coming along nicely in production. There's currently 15 of the 40k version left, 5 sets of the Shoulder and Helmen left, and then 49 of the Age of Sigma slash Fantasy slash D&D model left. So if you're putting off on getting one for some unfathomable reason, then you might end up missing out. If you enjoyed the video and want to support the channel, then Patreon is the place to be, with only $1 per month giving you access to a boatload of Warhammer Hentai, and $10 giving you access to the Major Kill Hentai calendar. Hit the subscribe button, then hit the real subscribe button, for more eternal content, join the Discord for more memes, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.